strategy that can deal with this present situation. He was hiding in the cave because he was not ready to confront war again. May I tell you this, my friend, for as long as you are here in the world, you can't, afford, you can't avoid wars. You can't avoid battles. As long as you are alive, there is no amount of prayer you can pray. To say that, oh, battles will not come your way again. No. The only person who is free from battle is a person who has died. As long as you are alive, as you are finishing one battle, another one is waiting. And so, when you discover that the devil has changed his strategy, what are you supposed to do? Change your own. Some old methods cannot counter or deal with some present problems. In Nigeria, we have been carrying old methods around for several years, several decades. Anytime there's a problem, you confront it with the same approach. That is the reason why we remain at the same spot. When you have a new problem, think of a new approach. As an individual, think of a new approach. As a family, think of a new approach. The moment Philistines came with their own approach, and you can see the way the narrator was describing this champion. Oh, there was a champion in the camp of the Philistines. They didn't have a champion to present until David showed up. And when David showed up, everything changed. I'm trusting God today that God will help Nigeria. Let your amen be louder. Amen. I learned a lesson from the life of Pharaoh. Genesis 41. Genesis 41, chapter, uh, verse 15 and 16. Genesis 41, 15 and 16. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have had say of thee, that thou can understand the dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Verse 37. So, I mean, from verse 17 onward, David began to, I'm um, sorry, Joseph began to interpret the dream. And verse 37 says, And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh. And in the eyes of all his servants, and Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this man is? A man in whom the Spirit of God is. Pharaoh had all kinds of people in his system. He had counselors, he had sorcerers, had witches, had these and that had magicians among his people. But when he listened to the counsel of Joseph, ah, he said, this one is different. We are not looking for any other person. You are the one who will do it. And he gave him employment immediately. Not an ordinary employment. He fast struck his promotion. He said, from now on, you'll be second in command in this land. That's how he solved this problem. Those who are not smart enough to identify those who can solve their problem, they will remain on the same spot forever. That is the reason why those who are smart, they are always reviewing their strategy. Always looking at what should we do with this new problem? How do we encounter this particular situation? How do we deal with this new challenge? You can't use old method to deal with new challenge. But to the glory of God, as I'm running off today, 
God decided to take over the battle himself. And I'm praying this prayer today that God will take over your battle. How did he do it? He sent David to the war front. He sent David at the right time. And when David got to the war front, the battle strategy changed. Before this time, there was only one champion that had been harassing people. Tall, with all the kind of, of um, weapons that he gathered together. And then in addition to the charms that he must have brought. Because he was challenging Israel in the name of his gods. Then David came. Young boy. Still a teenager. He had no weapon that he carried more than the one that he used with his um, animals all around. He was inexperienced as far as fighting big battles. But he had learned how to fight battles at the backside of deserts. And he had a walk with God. He was confronting a man who was filled with demons. But he was filled with the spirit of God. And I tell you, if you are going to win in the battles of life, you must be filled with the spirit of God. I have said it time and again from this particular place. The people you are confronting, you don't know the meetings they attend. Many of the people that are in your office, you don't know where they go to. From between Friday and Sunday. Some of them, the moment they leave office, they are not going home. They are either traveling outside Nigeria or traveling to some places to see their magicians and, 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 and visit their marabouts. From Friday to Sunday, they are going from place to place. From Friday to Sunday, you are going from party to party. And then, you want to confront them on Monday. By the time they are coming on Monday, they are heavily filled with demons. And you are empty of the Spirit of God. How can you win? David came filled with the Spirit of God. And when he confronts Goliath, when Goliath defied him by the name of his gods, he also spoke back in the name of his own God. He said, today, everybody will know that the living God is the one who determines the winner in life. He said, before the end of this battle, I will cut off your head. That small boy was speaking big words, swelling words. It is because he was carrying God. It is what you carry that will determine whether you are going to be a winner or you are going to be a loser. Saul was the tallest in Israel. But that made no difference when it comes to battle of life. David must have been a short person. But he won at the end of the day. When, when David was going to battle on that day to confront Goliath, Saul offered his garments. I thank God for David because he, know, he knows how to say no. Because you must not gamble with success by displaying a garment of failure. Don't gamble with success by displaying a garment of failure. Do not go to battle with a borrowed robe that you haven't tried before. Learn to be yourself. Tell your neighbor, learn to be yourself. When he was going to battle, Saul said, come and take this so that you will appear like a royal when you go to war. David, being an obedient boy, tried it. Yes. All of a sudden, he says, sir, you have been wearing this particular cloth for 40 days. It has not given you victory. I don't think I want to wear this kind of clothes. I don't want to gamble with success. Many of us, we gamble with success. We listen to wrong people. The fact that somebody had been in the church before you came does not mean you should listen to him. 
The fact that somebody has a title in the church and you don't have a title does not mean you should listen to him or her. You must remember, the only person who has a title among the disciples was Judas Iscariot. He was the treasurer. He was the only one who has a title. And yet, he was a failure. Don't follow just anybody. Don't gamble your life. Don't gamble your success. Your relationship with God will determine the level of victory that you can attain in life. Your relationship with God matters. And you can't afford to give that to somebody to determine for you. You must learn to walk with God. There is always a valley between two hills. The Bible reveals to us that Israel was standing on, on one mountain. The Philistines were standing on another mountain. In between them was the valley. The valley was the place where victory and, and, and defeat will be determined. There's always a valley between two hills. Don't be afraid when you are descending into a valley. Because I want you to know it will be for a brief moment. Your destination is the mountain top. Tell your neighbor, my destination is the mountain top. The world has found itself in a valley this year. And because of that valley experience, several people have found themselves in depression, in dejection, in loneliness, in confusion, in indebtedness, in sorrow. Several people have had, and they are still having, sleepless nights. May I tell you, all these are valley experiences. But it's all for a moment. If you find yourself in the valley, prepare for the mountain. When David descended to the valley, what did he do? He used that opportunity to prepare for victory. He got to the brook and he took five smooth stones and prepared to defeat Goliath. He could be feeling sad as he was going down. No. As he was descending, he was still telling Goliath, I'm coming to cut off your head. When you descend into the valley and you feel sad and you find yourself feeling dejected, feeling depressed, you find yourself surrounded by depths all around, I want you to know it is for a brief moment. You are going to the mountain top. Before the story ended, David was a victor. And Goliath was a victim. In battles of life, there must always be a victor and there must always be a victim. We are on the side of the eternal victor. The Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Before you go to battle, you have already won. But you can only say that if Jesus truly is in you. You can only say that if Jesus is the Lord of your life. You can say that if Jesus has possessed every aspect of your life. The moment he has taken over every aspect of your life, he will take over your battle as well. That's the reason why it doesn't matter which battle you confront. You'll always come out as a winner. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I want you to personalize to yourself. So I don't know what is your own valley looking like at this time. 
Is it a form of depression? Is it in form of loneliness? Are you confused? You look around, you are surrounded with a lot of debts. You don't even know how, to, how you are going to pay. Are you in sorrow? Have you found yourself in sleepless nights? And so on and so forth. You have sickness that you can't describe. Have you been forsaken by friends? Are you surrendered by adversaries? What does your own valley look like? I am not interested in how many enemies surround you. All I'm interested in, what I want to know is whether you're on the lost side. If you're on the lost side, you can be sure. You're already a winner. Bow down your heads. Let's pray together. I want you to give glory to God and appreciate him and honor him. I want you to bless him. Leading time of crisis. The world is a place of crisis. There are confusion all over the place. Depression is the order of the day. Pets, are you on the lost side? If you are on the lost side, you can take care of that. If you want to be on the lost side, all you need to do to turn your life over to him. And if you, want, if you want to do that at this time, I will pray with you. you. Want to turn your life over to him. Because your relationship with God will determine whether you will be a victor, you will be a victim. You determine whether you will be a conqueror, or you will be conquered. Your relationship with God. So you want to turn your life over to him at this time. All you need to do is to identify with Jesus. Open your heart unto him. And ask him to come into your heart. To take over your life. Once you do that. He will also take over your battle. So wherever you are, you want to turn your life over to him. I would like you to come to the altar. And I will pray with you. I can assure you, that simple decision will determine what happens in your future. So wherever you are, you want Jesus to take over your battle, take over your life. Just stand up wherever you are and come to the altar. I will pray with you. Thank you, Jesus. In the meantime, I want all of us to begin to call upon the almighty God that he will fight our battles. Lord, this is time of crisis. I need you more than ever. I need you more than ever. I need you more than ever. God bless you. Any other person is coming, please come quickly. Any other person is coming, please come quickly. Call upon the Lord. He has never left his own. He won't leave you. He will not leave you. Call upon him. You may be in the valley now, but he has a plan of mountain top for you. He has a plan of mountain top for you. It doesn't matter. Even if you have been defeated before, 
you will still win. This is your time to win. This is your time to win. The time to win. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name. We appreciate you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father Almighty, I want to thank you on behalf of your children who had come forward. We give you glory and honor because you have revealed to us that you are more than able to take care of the battles of our life. So even as they turn over their life unto you entirely, I pray, Heavenly Father, you will take over their lives in the name of Jesus. That which you alone can do, we do in their situation in the name of Jesus. As they open their hearts unto you today, Lord Jesus, I ask that you will set up your throne. That throne that no other person can possess. That, Lord, you will be the Lord and Savior of their heart in the name of Jesus. I ask you, Lord, that beginning from today, everything that concerns them, my Lord, you will take it over in the name of Jesus. Let their names be written in the Lamb's book of life. Wherever they have been defeated before, let them begin to have victory now. And so, Heavenly Father, we pray for everyone. Everyone who had listened to this word, we are asking every Heavenly Father that as many of us who have been defeated in one way or the other, we will begin to win from now in the name of Jesus. As many of us who have been using wrong strategy, open our eyes to the right strategy in the name of Jesus. My Father, my God, we pray just as you sent David to the war front at the right time and you changed that particular battle in favor of Israel. We pray, Heavenly Father, you will arise in your might. You will help Nigeria in the name of Jesus. Father Almighty, that David that will defeat our Goliaths, Lord, reveal him in the name of Jesus. My Lord and my God, we pray. The champion that we have not seen yet, just as Israel could not see their own champion, that champion, let it be manifest very soon in the name of Jesus. As you gave Israel victory in a way that nobody can imagine, Give us victory also in this land in the name of Jesus. Let Nigeria become a glorious country in the name of Jesus. Let our reproach and disgrace be over in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. And everybody will say... Please, my sister, God bless you. I want you to follow our pastors. God bless you. If you are clapping for Jesus, do it very well. I would like to receive the first timers. First timers, wherever you are, those of us who are worshiping with us for the first time, please, wherever you are, just wave your hands. If you are here for the first time today, okay. And you can come forward quickly so that we can pray with you. God bless you. All those who are coming for the first time, just come forward. God bless you. We welcome you.
You are welcome in the name of Jesus. And we want you to know this is your father's house. This is the place where God is dwelling. We want you to know that God does wondrous works here. We'd like you to be part of this particular great team. We want you to be part of this great congregation. So, beginning from next Sunday, you are no more a visitor, you are part of us. We would like you to be here every Sunday and be part of all our weekly services as well. And I can assure you, as we come week after week, very soon, you also, you will have a testimony. Father Almighty, we want to thank you for your beloved children. We appreciate you for all that you have done in bringing them today. You are the one who has directed their steps here. We pray, my Father, my God, that you will keep their feet in your house in the name of Jesus. If there's any of them who has not known you as their personal Lord and Savior, Father Almighty, we pray, you will reveal yourself to them in the name of Jesus. You will save their souls. Father Lord, and as many of them who have known you, we ask, O oh Lord, that they will continue to walk with you for the rest of their lives in the name of Jesus. Father Almighty, we pray that even as they've come here today, Lord, you will establish their faith in your kingdom in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. God bless you. Please, um, we have um, our pastor there who would like to receive you. Uh, just go this way. Please clap for them as they go to meet with our pastors. The Lord bless you. I believe we have all given our offerings. And if you are making transfer, I know you have made, you have made your transfer already. If you have not, please make your transfer now while we pray on this offerings. I'd like you to rise up as we bless the offerings. Father Almighty, we want to thank you for the offerings of your beloved children. We appreciate you, Lord, because you are the giver of every good and perfect gift. We thank you for what you have done in our lives. We thank you for making us to be a part of your kingdom. And so, Heavenly Father, we ask, O oh Lord, that all the offerings that we have given, you will accept in the name of Jesus. We ask, O oh God of heaven, every hand that has given offerings today, you will bless in the name of Jesus. King of glory, the kind of blessing that only you can give, that only you can deliver to our lives, let it locate us today in the name of Jesus. We are praying, my Father, my God, that if there's any problem in any life who has given this offering today, any form of devourer, any form of sickness, any form of oppression, Father, we ask, O oh Lord, it shall come to an end in the name of Jesus. We ask, O oh Lord, that as your children have spent their money for you, they will not spend the money on sickness. Father Almighty, we pray that everyone who is here, who is asking and say, Lord, I also want